Right, good morning, welcome back to the channel. So today's task is to fit the Corsa that failed the MOT like last week when I took it. If you watched the video, I took my old Corsa for an MOT. It, it failed on a few various things. I brought it home to fix it. Um, and that is what I'm going to do today. But before I can do that, I need to go to Euro Car Parts and get some supplies. Let me just quickly remind you of what it failed on. So it had one dangerous defect on the MOT, and they put that down to there being a hydraulic leak, but it turns out that that is actually an oil leak. I'll show you that when I get working on the car. I'll show you uh, the leak and why they thought it was hydraulic fluid and not oil. So I'm going to get a sump pan gasket for that. Although there was a few people that mentioned in the comments that it could be a rear main seal um the seal for the crankshaft inside the gearbox so um, i'm going to grab one of them anyway just in case we have to do that today i'm hoping that's not the case because that's a much bigger job than um, i'm anticipating i'm hoping that's just going to be the sump gasket however because they're so cheap i'll just grab um, a rear main seal anyway i'm also going to get a new sump bolt as well um, i think that's kind of it i don't think i really need anything else it also failed on a tie rod end but i've already got one of them in stock in the shed um, from like a previous car that i fixed got one of them failed on a brake line as well and i've got some brake line already so i can replace that and then the other two things were just the headlights so i'm going to take a look at the headlight bulbs uh, see if i need to get some new ones see if they just need cleaning i'm not entirely sure what the issue with them is but i'll investigate that a little bit further when i get to it so first things first euro car parts Go get some uh, bits and pieces for the Corsa, and then we can get cracked on it. I've got until about two or three o'clock today. Um, it's now half past eight, I think, in the morning. So I'm going to go to Euro, get some stuff, get cracking on this, and hopefully we can get most of the stuff done uh, before the end of the day. Because I'm going to book it in for an MOT in the week. It's now Saturday. I'm going to book it in for the MOT uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. So I've got a few days to get this stuff done. All right, so I'm back from Euro, and as you can see, I've got my bits. This is the sump pan gasket for a 1.2, and I think it's the same for 1.4 as well, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I got that, I got a rear main seal, like I said, this was like seven pounds or something, so it's silly not to get one just in case I do need it. And then I just got a sump uh, bolt as well, because I need to drain the oil, and the one that's on the car has been used quite a few times, so that was like one pound something, so it's worth getting it just because. So let's get started fitting this stuff. Uh, I'm going to get the car jacked up, get it on axle stands. I want to get it quite high because I'm going to be dealing with brake lines and stuff as well. So I need to be able to get under the car a fair bit. Um, so I'm going to jack it up nice and high. Uh, I'm going to tackle the sump first because that could possibly turn into a bigger job. So I'd rather know early on whether that's going to be a bigger job or not before I start doing anything else. So sump pan first. Exhaust bolts are going to be nice and easy because I had that off like less than a year ago. Um, so it should be a fairly easy job today. Uh, so let's get started. So that there is the supposed oil leak. But you can see, even when you touch it, and it's definitely oil. So like on the Astra, I think all I need to do is just undo the exhaust bolts, these three. Um, I'm gonna to need to take this splash shield off because that's sort of impeding where the pan's gonna come down. It's only a few bolts, so I'll take that off as well. Um, and then it's just the sump pan bolts, and I should be able to drop it down. I'll be pleased to know I've got some decent gloves on now. Um, I bought a pack of like nitrile black gloves, so hopefully these will serve me well and keep my hands reasonably clean.
So the weirdest thing just happened. You just saw me drop the exhaust from those rubber mounts, those two in the middle. I pulled it down, like off the bucket, and the O2 sensor is not even plugged in. So I don't know if it just pulled out of a socket or whether it was never plugged in. There wasn't an engine light, which was weird. Right, so I've got the oil drained. The exhaust is now hanging down there. I've got the plastic trim off on the driver's side. It's now just a case of undoing all the bolts around the sump um, and I can pull that off and we can change out the gasket. So I might have just noticed something that may have made this job a complete waste of time. I was just now undoing the bolts for the sump. I did these ones all along the front and I went to undo, there's like one hidden up there and then one up there. This one, completely loose, like not tightened whatsoever. In fact, look, I can do it up. It's barely in there. And then this one doesn't even have a bolt in. I don't know how well you can see that. No bolt, absolutely nothing in there. Look. So this one being loose and this one not even having a bolt, these are the two where it's leaking from. So there's a good chance that if I just tightened that one up, and put a bolt in that one and tighten that up, that leak would stop. But because I'm this far along and I've got everything apart anyway, and I've got a new gasket, I'm gonna go ahead and change it regardless. Actually, you can see, you can see the oil coming out of that bolt hole there. So I reckon that that was the culprit the whole time, just these bolts being loose or not having a bolt whatsoever. Um, but because I'm this far, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Um, it's just a few bolts to undo and we'll stick a new gasket on, make sure it's all clean and uh, actually put a bolt in this other hole. Right, so that's the sample nice and clean. I also cleaned out the uh, oil pickup as well. And I also cleaned the engine main surface. So this is all ready now to put back together. The new gasket on there, stick this pan back on, tighten all the bolts. I've also added another bolt. As you know, we were one missing. Um, so I've added another bolt, I had one spare. Right, well there you have it, that's the sump back on. I've tightened all the um, small bolts up to 10 newton meters, which is what it says in the Haynes manual. I've just done these ones by hand, sort of with a long ratchet, quite tight. So that is the sump done. I just need to reconnect the exhaust, um, put that cover back on, and that'll be this job done. Right, so I just wanna show you something real quick. As you know, this is the driver's side wheel here on the front. It came up on the MT with a tie rod end needed doing on this side. So I thought, whilst the car's jacked up in the air, I'll come around here, have a look at it, and see how bad the play is in the wheel. Check this out. If I grab the wheel, top to bottom, and shake it, look at the movement. I don't know how well you can see that. It's pretty bad. Take a look at this inside there. Can you see those strut bolts? They are completely undone. Look. How they didn't pick up on that on the MOT, I have no idea. And the tie rod end does need doing on this side, so once I'm in there, uh, obviously I'll tighten those bolts up at the same time and get that done, but I can't believe they missed that. I'm gonna make sure this time that the O2 sensor is actually plugged in. There we go. Got the mounts back up in the middle. Put the gasket back in here and put these bolts back in. And uh, we're almost done. Right, there we go, that's the sample done. That's the exhaust bolted back up. And I've also gone ahead and put the plastic trim back on this side. So that is us under here, completely done. Happy with that.
Right, so the next job on the list, I'm gonna tackle uh, the tie rod end here on the driver's side. I think this is the only one that's damaged. The other one didn't come off the MOT, so just gonna do one side today. I've got a tie rod end left over from when I did my friend's one a few weeks ago. Um, he only needed one replaced. He got a set of two, um, so he gave me the second one just in case I ever needed it. Funnily enough, I need it right now. So, so I'm gonna whip the wheel off, take a look, see what we've got. Um, also tighten up those bolts for the strut while I'm in there so that that's all good. Then get the tie rod end changed out and uh, that'll be another job done. Well there's the strut bolts that I was talking about as you can see. They're almost completely backed off. It must have been me that was the last one in here. Um, so this has been like this since l before last Christmas and the nuts just threaded on the end. So how this is held up, I have no idea. And then we've got the offending ball joint here. You can see all the rubber is split all the way around it. So as you can see both the old and the new are pretty much identical, same length and all that sort of stuff. This is the uh, offending article as you can see. The rubber boot is split all the way around so that means that dirt and grit and stuff is all going to get in this uh, ball joint. It's quite loose as well so it's definitely, definitely past it. So I've ran into a little issue with the new ball joint is the threads seem to be different on this to what they are on there. It goes on about one or two threads and then just completely jams up. Um, and having looked inside the threads on the actual ball joint, this one has a, the newer one has like a coarser thread. So there's not as many threads in this one as there is in this. Now, the other one of these did go on a 1.4 coarser, so maybe the threads are different. Uh, so I'm gonna have to pick another one of these up at Euro. I thought that they'd be the same for the 1.2 and the 1.4. Um, but however, that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm gonna need to pick another one of these up at Euro when I go and get some oil tomorrow. Um, so I'm just gonna have to leave this side like this for now, but it's not a problem. It won't take me a minute to stick another one back on. Okay, so that's about as much as I'm gonna be able to do in this wheel arch today. I'll just stick a new tie rod on there tomorrow. Um, won't take a couple of minutes just to do that. I've tightened up the bolts for the strut, so that's all good. It doesn't wiggle anymore. I checked everything else, obviously nothing else came up on the MOT, so I can assume everything else is fine. So I'm gonna move on to one of the last things that was on the MOT, and that was a brake pipe was rusty or corroded. Um, it said the one that goes from the front to the back. So I'm gonna go along the whole line from the front to back um, and check for any corrosion spots. If it's not bad, like what my Fiesta was, I might just clean them up with a wire brush and give them a little paint like I did last time. Obviously, if they're bad, I'll replace them. Um, but I'll inspect the whole thing. I'll show you what I find and, uh, and we'll deal with it however I see fit at the time. Right, so I'm under the car and on the passenger side, this is where the brake lines run. They come from up there, that's where they join in. And if you look at them all the way down, look fine, look fine to me. On this here, I don't know how well you can see that, this left hand pipe here seems to have a bit of corrosion around where this clip is. I guess some moisture and stuff has got stuck in there. So, I think that that is the only place that they mean that it's corroded and it's really not too bad. Again, it's just a little bit of surface rust. So, I'm gonna take this clip off and just try and clean up with a wire brush, see how it looks, see how bad the rust is, and then um, either replace the line if it's that bad, or um, I'm just gonna wire brush it and paint it like what I did on my Fiesta and just hope that that's good enough. So I'm gonna take this clip off. There's just like a bolt up in there. It's a really tiny little bolt. And I'm gonna take that out and then uh, remove this clip. Right, so I've undone the screw for the clip. If you wanna know, it was a 5.5 millimeter socket. Um, so I used like a little quarter inch, five and a half mil, which is a strange size, but that's now off. Now this is the pipe in question. I don't know if you can see that. Bit of surface rust there, um, where it's just been sitting in the clip. So. I think I'm gonna just try and use a bit of sandpaper um, and go round it and do like a little sort of motion where I try and get some of this crust off and I'll see what it looks like after that. I 
think that looks plenty good enough to pass an MOT. Absolutely fine. Don't even ask me why I've got it, but I've got some um, green nail varnish here and I'm just going to touch up the spots that I sanded down and see if I can get it to match in a little bit. Rusty brake line you say? Don't know what you're on about. So I've spotted yet another oil leak on this car. It's leaking from the uh, driver's side drive shaft out of the gearbox and dripping down here. So that was probably joining the engine oil here and making it drip even worse. So gonna have to find a seal for that, I think. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that is me done for the today. I've not got any more time today to do any more work on the Corsa. However, I feel like I got a lot done. I'll just give you a quick rundown of everything that I've done and what I've got left to do. So the sump gasket was the first thing I tackled. All went pretty smoothly. Exhaust bolts were pretty fresh from when I put them on last and there were stainless steel ones. I made sure I put stainless steel ones on. That all went quite smooth. All the bolts came out. Everything cleaned up. Sump pan back in put the bolts in that were missing from that end of the sump. That was actually quite a quick and easy job, that sump. Um, I was quite pleased with how that went. Then I moved on to the tie rod. Little bit of a hiccup with the tie rod. Didn't have the right one. Um, my friend who came around sort of a couple of weeks ago and we did a tie rod end on his 1.4 Corsa, which is like 2005. I guess they have different inner tie rod threads. Um, I wasn't aware of that. I thought that they'd just all be the same. You know, you kind of uh, assume that they just use the parts for all of them. However, they're different. So I'm going to go to Eurocar Parts on Monday and um, get a new tie rod end as well as some oil and an oil filter as well for the engine. So that's a quick job to button up. I then tightened up the strap bolts, which I'd left loose probably this time last year. Um, I don't know how the car drove for so long like that. Uh, couldn't have been much fun to drive. Um, but I wasn't the one driving it, so I wouldn't know. So tightened them up, buttoned that, done, sorted. Then I moved on to the brake pipes. Like before, they just weren't bad. I'd, I don't know whether they just have to put them down at the first sign of rust now, or the first sign of corrosion, they just have to jot it down as a, a failure. But um, they were a failure. I cleaned them up, painted them with my little handy nail varnish. They look good as new, nothing wrong with them whatsoever. Again, if I'm worried about brake lines, if I think they look bad enough to which they're gonna leak, obviously you're gonna replace them because it's vital that you do, um, but they just didn't look bad at all. So hopefully they'll go through the MOT like that as they are. And then I didn't show it on camera, but I did actually take a quick look at the headlights because as you know, both the headlight beams, for some reason came up on the MOT. It wasn't that they needed adjusting. It said something like neither of the beams were showing on the machine. So um, I took a look at that. The bulbs, I just looked at them, they looked fine. I then looked at the headlights themselves. There's no fogginess to them. They're crystal clear. Corsa lights don't very often mist over and fog up. Um, so they're absolutely fine. And then I found out that the driver's side one doesn't adjust. You can adjust it up and down, right? But you can't adjust it side to side. Now that's gonna be an issue. If they need adjusting at the MOT place, they're not gonna be able to do it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one from my 1.8 project over to this Corsa for now because I know that that one adjusts. What I'll do is I'll send them in as they are and just ask them to adjust them uh, so that they work on the machine. I think that's all that needs doing. I think they just need a proper decent adjustment because um, they've never really been done and they're quite strict on that now. So that's that and that's kind of everything. That should finish up this car. So the plan, right? All those things that I just mentioned that still need doing, I'm gonna do in the next video. I'm gonna end this one here. In the next video, I'm gonna to go to Euro Car Parts, get the last bits that I need, and then tackle all the little finishing up jobs that I need to do, swap the headlight over, um, oil and all that sort of stuff, get that finished. And in the same video, I'll get it booked in for an MOT, and I'll take it for the MOT in that video as well. I'll do it as like one big video. So yeah, that's the plan. Hope you guys enjoyed this one nonetheless. Got lots done, feel quite accomplished. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Anyone that's ordered stickers or any sort of merch, I apologize if it's late, but I just haven't been on top of it lately. I, it's all completely my fault. Um, I just forget that I even have stickers and stuff like that. I just completely, but I've sorted it all out now. Everything's been ordered, everything's been sent off. So you should get it in the next day or two. So yeah, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future content and I'll see you in the next one.